This week we'll be feeding my tricolor hognose snake who's slithering away right now. Come here, come back. This one I'm very excited to be working with because you don't see tricolors that often and usually when you first see them you think they're a mixture between a milk snake and a hognose snake or usually you think it's actually a milk snake at first then you realize it is in fact a hognose then you realize just how cool the snake is. These are native to South America they don't play dead when they are scared instead they kind of rattle their tail which seems to be the default defense mechanism for, an, well, for a lot of snakes and she's trying to pull it into her tube. So come on out, girl. Okay, I finally have her straightened out and she finally has the mouse straightened out. She's not trying to take it sideways. So we can continue. I got her and a male from Germany. There's a lot of breeders overseas, so they're a little bit less expensive over there, but you have to pay importing fees and you have to risk traveling overseas. So I decided to risk it and they came in perfect. They've been great eaters for me, her and her future boyfriend. She's growing a lot faster than her boyfriend, but that's kind of just a female hognose thing. And you may have noticed it, but if you look at their scales, they don't have keeled scales like western hognoses do. So that's just another difference between the tricolors and westerns or really any other type of hognose snake. You can feed them a surprisingly large meal for the size of their head, because if you look at her body, that mouse won't even create a lump. So she could technically handle a meal that's a little bit bigger. This is just a hopper, and she could take down a small adult, to be honest, and she has in the past. I feed mine frozen thawed rodents on a tray inside of their enclosure, and the reason why I feed them on this tray is so that the mouse doesn't get stuck to as much bedding if I were to just drop it right on in. Since I feed frozen thawed, uh, they're thawed in hot water, and since the rodent is therefore wet when it's offered to the snake, it sticks to everything it touches. As you can see, there's even a little piece of bedding right there that I'm going to get off. There we go. So I kind of baby these guys because they're a little bit more expensive than some of my other snakes, but they're great snakes to have. They're kind of twitchy, as you just saw. They twitch around all the time when they're defensive or excited. Their nose also isn't as upturned as a western hognose's. Their nose reminds me more of an eastern hognose's nose with how it's not very shovel-like. And she loves her humidity box. Since these are a more tropical species of hognose living in South America, they do like their humid environments. I don't recommend having a completely humid environment because then you run the risk of scale rot but offer them a humidity box all the time and they will use it about 50% of the time I've found. The tricolors will grow fast, they breed a lot, they have several clutches in just one season, and as a result, they don't live as long, unfortunately. The oldest known tricolor hognose snake was about eight years old, and that does seem to be the cap to their lifespan. A lot of tricolors will start out very bright, and then as they age, they will darken. And she did the same thing. She had a lot of bright red scales when I first got her, and if you look closely, you'll see that those red scales are slowly turning black. And I don't know if they're going to turn completely black or not. A lot of them keep kind of a, a subtle red hue, at least. But we'll see. It's been fun watching her transformation. So I'm super excited to be working with this species, since you don't see them very often in the States especially, and I'll hopefully be getting babies at the earliest, very late next year, so 2018. She's not ready to breed right now, she still has some growing to do, but she should make a great breeder for me someday. And there she goes, back into her burrow. Since they like to burrow just as much as any other hognose species, I do recommend a bedding that can support burrowing opportunities and provide some enrichment for them. But there you have it. Thanks again for watching, and vote for next week's, and we'll see you again then.